uh, I think all the three friends here, they have uh, very clearly and categorically said the things uh, as we are discussing and reflecting on the issues. I, I think the, the first and foremost, this obsession with the growth and the predatory model of development, chronic capitalism and all that included, I think this is the first and foremost thing that we need to get off the minds, clearing the conceptual cobweb at that. I think the planners and policy makers in the large professions of economics, I have earned my bread teaching economics and I was a member of the Maharashtra State Planning Board and all that. Uh, we are the culprits. Uh, we are the most resource illiterate people and I think this resource illiteracy is the great challenge. Uh, I was just uh, during the last past week, Sunitaji, in Kashmir, and I spoke to the students of all the four universities. Governor Ora wrote them, uh, you were in Rio and that paper he read and he said, well, you go and discuss. And I went to few colleges also. And there is, you know, this obsession with the growth. How do you get off that? And now this, uh, some words that are thrown, uh, they say, well, economic, uh, economic fundamentals of India are very sound. All economists, uh, they, and all people are saying, but never talk about ecological fundamentals and ethical values. So I think it is a time that... Uh, uh, what we have, the it need not be a dialogue and debate between the experts. And, you know, some of the basic data, like, say, for uh, the CSE's work, SPWD's work, and we are sitting and reflecting on Lauraj Kumar and all that, where we said that even on a hundred millimeter of a rainfall, you have a million liter water per hectare. This data and Sunita ji and all, uh, they have been saying, I have been pleading that. And in fact, this, what things you are hearing about the Maharashtra, I was one of the culprits. When I went, uh, I was in a Maharashtra state planning board, I told them, Maharashtra, which has a 40% of India's large dams, uh, hardly regets 5% of their area by surface water. Uh, and uh, the, much of it is a groundwater best and you are drying the groundwater of hundreds and thousands of years. And and if the sh a crop like a sugar cane in Maharashtra or paddy in Punjab. So some of those things, they are never, are not at all there in our all economic courses uh, I, and all our teaching. So I think where would you get the people to think that these are the basic ideas? So Sunita ji, I think challenge before us is to widen uh, this dialogue and uh, luckily we have such a uh, solid work and I think th for this there is a one need uh, there has to be a lot of literature in vernaculars I am talking about very practical steps um, uh, for example Madhav Gargi she writes uh, very regularly in Marathi newspapers and that uh, communicates on ecology. So each one of us, whatever is our mother tongue, to widen this dialogue, maybe that I'm not raising a question, but saying it's uh, uh, how do we take further. Mm -hmm. My second point is that I think all problem is the problem of the lifestyle. Problematic in one word is the lifestyle and the stupid lifestyle. And unless you are prepared to change that stupid lifestyle, I think nothing much would happen on the front of the environment. Uh, for example, Sunita ji, I'm not, I mean, I don't feel uh, that I'm saying just in your presence. Uh, in all our down to earth things that come, I give to many schools. And they say, I said, uh, and in one of the schools in Aurangabad, they say, what is the cost of the car? And uh, that's a, a, a piece that you have written, that the cost of the car is earth. And the children, and my grandson who came, he said, there was a very good discussion on in the school. I think this is a, something that we need to do. So the challenge is to redefine development and talk of ecological fundamentals and ethical values. Without that, much of the good work that I'm in such a pioneering and path-breaking work that is being done uh, uh, would remain there. It, ha it is valuable, but I think, uh, and finally I would say, uh, this everywhere, then you, uh, that means all, at the end of the day, you go to any uh, discussion, they say, then that means you don't want growth. 
yes i i said i don't want uh, this this kind of growth which is undifferentiated and undirected and there can be development without much of the growth and uh, the need of the hour is to uh, um, measure everything on the basis of ecological footprint and by and large in many things there is a room for enough room for redistribution no net growth i think unless we take some of these position uh, the purpose and this and uh, finally as i said uh, the development terrorism worries me a lot because har cheez are aapko vikas nahi chahiye agar vikas chahiye to ye sab baatein kyun bolte ye vikas nahi vinash hai ye baat to ye development terrorism is a greater th- uh, threat than other kind of terrorism so are we prepared to grapple with these issues and uh, think whether uh, at the end of the day each one has to ask whether we are a part of the problem or part of the answer right. anyone else yes uh, <coughs> i am baskar rao from national social watch uh, my question is ashish ji uh, you mentioned this uh, the uh, budgets are not growing of the ministry and there is a need for manpower uh, increase all this thing do you think these are necessary things or are there alternatives for this thank you I am DC Das and now from a, a private consultancy firm I was in government earlier I see here I came across a book on environmental economics vis-a-vis the culture of worshiping cows and trees the Scandinav- Scandinavian economist he said that is a qualified economist holds two PhDs he defined their economics earliest definition was arts and science of managing the house keeping now this growth centered policy at any cost which it does not see that the bigger house keeping for indian population has got a limit and has got a tradition also which was mentioned by him the micro level activities india survived for more than 1500 years invasions after invasion because of its micro economics village centric and other thing so what is this thing how to make them to understand that they are thinking this this uh, which is coming from the western formula as a growth with industry is another thing is the only formula we do not have the thing um, thing to say that it has got a limit anything you want to grow anything you to brought the money that money investment also has got a cost and we, uh, will you not make an analysis you tell all the time that you do this sort of analysis and other thing you are drawing the 1000 million crores and in 1000 million crores so what is the investment what is the fallout and what is the um, 50 years uh, uh, double, uh, cost affected can we not show that thing in that way say that they, in a mining we are investing that 1000 crores or 1000 million crores or in the industries we are doing something what is the environmental cost and other things and how they are going to this one how they are destroying the employment and when they creating the employment of 1 lakh they are destroying the employment of 15 lakhs can you not show this thing in every their effort they are destroying more employment opportunities than what they are creating like this is a very clear thing that in the village side they are all destroying the employment and urban side they are creating the employment which which gives the economy income to live in a slum that's all they are they are offering thank you nisha can i now ask you to respond to both that as well as i think the larger question that was raised in terms of you know building institutions to is that the way to do it or uh, is there another way and i'll ask all the panelists to do that and then i'll take the last words right thanks nita yeah okay um 
I tend to agree very much with the point that you just made with regard to uh, the different kinds of opportunities that are lost as a result of the development that is created. In fact, it was very interesting in the case of a recent um, study which was commissioned by the mining, law, mining group in Goa, which showed very clearly that the, um, all the multipliers um, favored agriculture in a report which was done for mining, and yet mining is always privileged over agriculture. So, uh, so uh, you know, I don't know how such decisions are made. Um, in in a number of uh, situations, you see how fisheries are lost and the fishery opportunities are lost as, as a result of this development. So there is a very skewed kind of thing happening, but that's happening, I think, because, you know, we are not looking to see at, you know, who is bearing the costs of what we are taking forward. And I think in this case, um, with reference to the point that, um, that Mr. Srivastava made with, you know, with regard to revisiting the macroeconomic policy, I think maybe we need to read Jajasku Rajan for a bit. Um, Jajasku Rajan. Jajasku Rajan, uh, who was uh, one of the mainstream economists who decided that this cannot continue the way it was. Of economic growth and entropy. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. And that there are limits to growth that we really need to take into account. And perhaps it's very important for us to revisit him at this point in time and adopt bioeconomic models rather than the kind of model that we have at the moment. Um, so, so that would be one of the issues. With regard to institutions, you know, I honestly think that a lot of our problems are really poor environmental governance. And the fact that a lot of the environmental governance that is happening is over secondary to everything else. Uh, and we are not really insisting on it being a very clear and, uh, and, and, and sort of um, uh, strong mandate uh, as it could have been. So, and this is only possible to be rectified if we have multi-centered governance, if we have a number of institutions who become strong at their own level, if we bring in proactive disclosure or insist on proactive disclosure, and if you have regulatory control through society rather than at the MOEF or at the State Pollution Control Board. If through RTI, we, we should not have RTIs, we should insist that all, say, mining activity, everything be put in kiosks which are available to everybody so that people can react if they see things happening which are wrong. It's only this way that the government will sit up. It, it's only this way that industry will sit up. People's power at the end of the day. I'm not advocating anarchy. Or I'm not advocating revolution. I'm just advocating more responsible uh, uh, and informed um, uh, responses from the part of people to this. Uh, I'll stop there, Sunita. I'm sure there'll be more questions.